Put a black hat hacker or white hat hacker, and you've been hard at work running all these attacking campaigns. And unfortunately, your salary is not reflecting that. So is there some way we can change that? Well, the answer is yes. So I just thought of this interesting scenario that will make the lesson a little more exciting. So here in front of us, I actually have the Open Web Application Security Project running. And this is WebGoat. So WebGoat is a vulnerable web application system platform for us to run all of our ethical hacking on. And once again, all right, big disclaimer, hacking is illegal. If you want to be able to run any of these hacking exercises, remember to do it only in your own lab environment. So in my case, I'm running virtualization here, or you can run it on any of your preferred cloud providers, as long as you're working within the own private cloud so that you do not accidentally run all these hacking techniques against different kind of websites because else that could get you into trouble and if you get into trouble that would mean that i would also get into trouble okay so that's the whole idea behind it so once again all right in front of us we have the following all right so on the left side we have injection flaws and you can click under the modify data with sql injection so sql sql stands for structured query language and it's a way for a lot of these companies to store data into a structured format generally you can think of them kind of like an excel sheet where you have columns and you have rows and you can easily feed data in and this makes it really easy for us to run all this kind of data control and data storage and a lot of websites in fact run either a structured query language database or a not only structured query language database not only sql so pretty good ways uh, for them to be able to run all this different kind of database systems to help them house all the system of records so right in front of us we have enter your user id so go ahead and click on it all right so once you click go you'll see the following output so we have the following user ID followed by the salary and we want to find out whether this particular field is vulnerable to a cyber attack and in this case there are several options for us so I can go ahead and open up say terminal and I can zoom a little more so it's easier for you to see and what we can do here is to go ahead and enter say for example all right I can do a hit of say USR share what list WFUS and followed by SQL all right so go ahead and enter on that all right, so we have the injections and followed by sql.txt. So we can also do a tail for this, and this will show us all the different kind of payloads that we can inject into a few to see if it is vulnerable to SQL injection. So that's the whole idea behind it. And directly from here, what we can do now, we can open up Burp Suite to be our interceptor. So I can go to the top right corner, click on the Foxy proxy, and click under Burp Suite. So once I click under Burp Suite, what I can do next is go ahead and launch Burp Suite. So this is going to be our interceptor, and then we'll be able to see what kind of information is sent through the browser all the way back into the application server and from there on we'll be able to try to identify where are the different points where we can run all this injection on so now what we can do here is go ahead and click next click start burp so we're starting our burp suite community edition which is going to be our interceptor and of course click on the proxy tab and make sure that intercept is on and of course going back into the browser all we got to do now is go ahead and click go Okay, so here we have the interception of the request and I can do a right click and I can send over into intruder. So once we send over into intruder, what we can see here is we have the target, which is the host IP address or domain name in the real world. And we have port number and we have positions. So all I got to do now is clear all this existing position. And instead, what I can do here is I can go ahead under user ID. I can enter J Smith and I can enter one other character and all i got to do now is click add so this will add the payload position next up we can click on our payloads and we can load the payload so in this case we'll use a simple list we can click load all right and right here this is the directory that we were at so we have slash usr share what list wfast injections all right and go ahead and select sql.txt and click open so once it's open up all we got to do right now is go to top right corner and click under start attack all right so click ok on this and this will begin running the attack and one important point to take note of is actually under the status because the status will review a lot of information for us because it identifies whether the payload is working or not to a fairly large extent okay so there's a lot more analysis investigation and so what we're doing here is to look at certain fields right using our payload injecting into that field and see whether we are able to gain access into the server ultimately okay so going back into the payload here i can actually click under attack 
all right, on a pause. And right in front of us, we have different payloads that's been injected into the site, and we have a status. So in this case, you can click at the bottom, request or response. And if I click on a response, we can see the different kind of feedback coming back from the server. And of course, we will be able to identify, okay, based on the payloads that we have injected into the site, which one works and which one doesn't work. So that's the beauty of running this kind of attacks using Burp Suite to help us identify vulnerabilities and possible payloads that can then allow us to run further queries and attacks against the site. So moving back into the website over here, so we've entered user ID. And of course, if you look, there are several payload options that we can utilize. And in this case, I actually have it under mouse pad. So right in front of us, we've got a couple of payloads. Right, so here we have J Smith followed by a single code followed by a semicolon. So what are we doing here? So what we are trying to do here is to end the structure query language and then updating with our own SQL statement into the site so that we can update the user ID information right here. So I can go ahead and copy this, okay? And I can go back into browser. I can turn off the interceptor through Foxy Proxy. So what I can do now is go back into the page and under user ID, I can paste the payload that we have created and click go. And you see the following, no result match. Is something wrong here? Are we not able to actually get the result or information? It's working because we're able to update the salary into the statement. And now what I can do is just go ahead and enter the user information, JS Smith, and click go. And once I click on that, you see over here, the salary has now been updated to 15002. And if I go ahead, going back to the payload, and if I was to change the value here to say 15005, okay? And if I go ahead and copy this whole payload, going back into the input field, and I can go ahead and click go again, all right, congratulations, you have successfully completed this lesson. And once more, all I got to do is enter the user ID, click go once more, and that's it. And as quickly as that, we're able to inject our own salary into the table. Next up, what we can do here is if you go on the left side, you can see that we have add data with SQL injection. So now that we have identified the flow with the input view, we can actually update it with our own fields or values into the table. The important point here is to be able to identify the vulnerability and then after which you can run all sorts of payloads directly into the website. So that's the whole point behind today's tutorial. The next up is that now we've identified the vulnerability of the input view, we can literally add our own data into the table. So of course, going back into open web application security project website is that we have a particular area where we can go ahead and look under here. So on the left side, you can see under injection flaws and you can see that we have an add data with SQL injection. All right, so go ahead and click on that. And of course, right here, because we've identified the vulnerability using Burp Suite earlier, we can look at entering your user ID. So in this case, we have J Smith. And what we can do now is to inject our own payload into the site. And of course, earlier when you were looking at mousepad, you would have identified the second payload that we could be using as part of the attack. So going to mousepad here, all I got to do is copy the following information. All right, so we have the user. Again, we're using a single quote followed by semicolon. So again, it depends on the kind of vulnerability that you've identified. And at the same time, all right, what is the payload they can use to inject into the site, after which you have all these different kind of SQL query or SQL statements that you can inject into the site to update information into the site directly. So here we have the following, which is insert into salaries, user ID, comma salary values hacker loy followed by a million dollars for salary and of course i would really love that if that is my real salary okay and i'm sure you would love it too if that's your real salary so going back into the tutorial here all you got to do now is copy the payload so go back to the website all right right click and paste the payload and go ahead and click go and it says the following congratulations you successfully completed this lesson and all i got to do now is enter the user id as hacker loy click go and we can see the following, all right? I got four salaries right here, all right? That's $4 million, that's amazing. I would love to get my paycheck pretty soon, okay? <laughs> and of course, the next question is, does this work in the real world? Well, the answer is a surprising yes, because you can actually look up on all these different kind of bug bounty programs, and you will see that for SQL injection, is not just about injecting into an input field. And in fact, there's several options for you to actually inject into. You can inject in the haters, you can inject in the input fields, in the URI, and so many options for you to actually run all these different kind of hacking techniques on a website. So not just the input field alone. And once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. Remember, like, share, and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.